Welcome to Episode 3 of my Black Ops 3 Humiliation Challenge Guide. In this episode, the Gone Fishing Challenge. Earn 5 Depth Charge Medals, which is to kill an enemy who is in the water with a grenade, C4, or trip mine. Surprisingly, this is one of the more heavily requested challenges, despite only needing a mere 5 kills. I believe it stems from the fact that there are only a handful of maps that have water in them. To make matters worse, most people don't linger in bodies of water. In fact, people tend to avoid them altogether. Coupling the best equipment to use as well as the best water-based locations will ensure you finish this challenge as fast as possible, which is the goal of this video. Some challenges you complete in Black Ops 3 do not offer any evidence of registering a notch towards the challenge you're working on. Luckily for us, however, this one does. So first of all, let's talk about the Depth Charge Medal itself. In order to receive such a medal, you have to kill an enemy with an explosive while they are underwater. Despite the challenge itself stating that only the grenade, C4, and trip mine work, this is far from everything. I went ahead and tested each and every item and specialist weapon in the game, just to make sure I was giving out the correct information. Let's first confirm that the three items stated in the challenge description itself are in fact legit. As you can see here, deploying and detonating a C4 while both you and the enemy are underwater rewards you with a depth charge medal. What a lot of people fail to realize is that only your enemy has to be underwater. If you deploy a C4 underwater, go on land, detonate it, and get a kill with it, it'll still count as a depth charge medal. What won't work is if your enemy is not fully submerged. He must be completely underwater for it to register. With the grenades, both frag grenades and semtex grenades seem to count. I should note that the underwater deployment of throwable items is drastically slowed, and this is thanks to the underwater physics. If you happen to stick someone with a semtex grenade while on land, and then they jump in the water to meet their fate, this will count as a depth charge still. The odds of this happening are likely slim to none, but it's worth noting. Lastly, trip mines. And these are actually a bit strange. A deployed trip mine will register as a depth charge medal, but getting them to harm your enemies is another story. I found that if you place a trip mine so that the blast radius extends upwards, more often than not, it will not do any damage. And this I simply can't explain. It's not like this happened to me only once. It was virtually every time I placed it so that the explosion went upwards. Watch here as battery absorbs the trip mine's blast and then comes over to mock me straight in my face by mimicking having an underwater wank. What a dick. I even tried to stun them with shock charges in hopes of keeping them momentarily still. They'd freeze in place from the shock charge, but the blast would do absolutely nothing. If you place the trip mine so that it projects downwards on the other hand, the blast will successfully register and your enemy will bite the dust. Likewise, placing a trip mine so that the blast radius is horizontally oriented will also work. So just as advertised, these three items more or less will register towards the challenge. Now let's dive a bit deeper and see what else may qualify. A thermite grenade does not count. I didn't even think they'd work underwater, but they definitely do. The hive pods from Nomad Specialist Weapon also don't register, though they also definitely work underwater. The Sparrow Specialist Weapon can both count and not count. If you get a direct hit underwater with the Sparrow, it will not give you a depth charge medal. I tried this both with me outside the water and with me underwater, and neither worked. However, a non-direct hit kill will register, so if you decide to use the Sparrow, just be sure not to score a direct hit. The War Machine is a different story. Not only will it register for an indirect explosion kill, but unlike the Sparrow, getting a direct impact kill will count. I'm not sure why that's the case, but it definitely is. Perhaps the best specialist weapon that counts are the gravity spikes. Activating these while underwater will easily give you a notch towards this challenge. If you're feeling nostalgic, you can climb the top ropes and drop a Macho Man Randy Savage elbow down into the water on any unsuspecting foes. The XM-53 launcher will also count towards this challenge. I tested both direct impact as well as indirect, and both of these count. Again, this is surprising considering that Sparrow's direct impact kills do not count, but the XM-53 direct impact kills do count. I know a few of you may ask about score streaks as well, so I included a few of these in my testing. The only three that I thought might have the chance of counting were the RC car, the dart, and the guardian. The RC car will not allow you to penetrate the water. You simply hover over it. You can still kill people submerged, but it won't count. The dart, on the other hand, definitely can go underwater, but getting a kill by doing so still does not register. Lastly, the Guardian can't be deployed underwater, but if you put it overlooking a body of water, it'll crane its neck downward and kill anyone nearby. But again, this does not count. 
So now that we know what we can use for this challenge, let's talk about the best game mode, maps, and tactics. As I mentioned earlier, there's only a handful of maps in the game that contain water. Hands down, the best map to do this challenge is on Hunted. If you saw my Dr. Lung Dark Ops challenge video, you'll know that this map is ideal for water-based challenges. The water extends for a good portion of the map. I had the most luck with this challenge in the free-for-all game mode. So there's two locations you need to be familiar with. This spot right here we'll call the cave. A lot of people will hop in here to avoid going through the cave and out towards the sea flag. They'll typically take the entire swim, which goes right through this tunnel. It'll pop you out on the other side, which is what we'll call the waterfall. From here, you can swim through another tunnel and pop out in this building. The best tactic is to stick near this waterfall side as opposed to the cave. The tunnels over here offer great strategic advantage for this challenge. So what you use will likely be dependent on what level you currently are. I recommend running two C4s, one shock charge, the XM-53 launcher, and gravity spikes. If you don't have C4, run one trip mine instead. I'm going to only cover the C4 method for the map hunted. I'll talk about the trip mine method later for another map. The reason I recommended two C4s is due to Flak Jacket. If you missed my fire discipline challenge guide, I noted that Flak Jacket completely counters C4, which you probably already knew. But I also mentioned that two C4s will manage to kill even a Flak Jacket user. There's nothing worse than setting a C4 trap underwater only to have someone with Flak Jacket set it off and ruin it. Running two C4s will ensure this doesn't happen. So what you want to do is place both C4s in the first narrow tunnel right here. I find this little tunnel is the most populated spot. Then we want to use the shock charge like a motion detector. Place it in the long tunnel heading towards the cave. Then move directly above where the long tunnel comes to an end on the waterfall side so that your back is touching the wall. You'll be high enough that people swimming through the long tunnel won't see your feet dangling below. And you'll also have a clear view of where your two C4s are. I like to fire a few shots off to alert radar junkies that you're in the area. Wait for an enemy to come through and then detonate the C4 for an easy depth charge medal. If someone triggers your shock charge, simply look down and engage them in an underwater duel. Remember though, you don't have to be underwater or anywhere near the water yourself to register a notch for this challenge. If you'd rather play C4 underwater with a set it and forget it mentality and then go rack up some kills, that's fine too. I'd still suggest placing the C4 in that first tunnel though. Another good map is Aquarium, but only on the hardpoint game mode. Despite the map's name, it only has two areas with water, and both are very small and very shallow. One of the hardpoint rotations, however, utilizes this underwater area, which can definitely aid in completing this challenge. As you can see here, the third hardpoint rotation is the one we want. So when the second rotation is up, you can go set up shop at the third one in anticipation for your enemies. Place your C4s or trip mines down and lie in ambush. In my own experience, I didn't have much luck with deployable items here. And that's mostly because it's so shallow, and enemies are constantly bobbing up and down rather than staying completely submerged. I found the gravity spikes to be far more reliable here. Again, approach this area before it turns into a hard point. Once it turns, allow the enemy to cap it and then come flying in for a Hulk Hogan leg drop. The blast radius is large enough that you're bound to get at least one guy who is underwater. There's two more great maps. But unfortunately, these are both DLC maps. The first one is Rise. This one has a fairly well traversed and deep body of water. In the hardpoint game mode, it's also featured as the second hardpoint rotation. And again, you can set up shop with your C4s or trip mines prior to it turning into the hardpoint. Or you can use the gravity spikes just like we did on Aquarium. If you're watching this video right when it came out and you have the second DLC for Black Ops 3, you're in luck. Currently, the easiest way to complete this challenge is on the map Verge. There's two reasons for this. First, you won't have to join minigames to get to the map. The second DLC was just released, so it has its own playlist currently. So there's a 1 in 4 chance you'll play the map. Second of all, there's an amazing spot that you can patrol with a variety of tactics. There's a huge body of water directly under the B flag, and heading towards the left side will take you through a small tunnel-like enclosure. It's here that you'll notice a flat wall. This is the wall you want to put your trip mines or C4 on, as people won't bother checking behind them if they drop down to take a swim. Once you've got a trip mine there, swim backwards just a bit and lie in wait. Sooner or later, some newbie booby is going to drop through that opening and get a trip mine straight up their ass. If you happen to encounter a lot of flak jacket users, I'd use the XM-53 launcher instead. You can wade in the water right in front of that opening with your launcher ready to fire. 
As soon as you see someone drop into the water, fire away. A direct impact will cut through flak jacket with ease. Gravity spikes are also ideal here. Don't be afraid to fire a few rounds from your weapon to draw some attention to yourself. Once that raving lunatic comes to get his red dot radar fix, simply deploy your gravity spikes and cold cock him into oblivion. Any game mode will work for this map, but it should be noted that the robot on safeguard will actually walk through the water here. Where there's a safeguard robot, there's typically a cluster of enemies, which means they'll be ripe for the fishing. There's also a hardpoint rotation that utilizes this body of water here. Simply use the same tactics I discussed earlier. And that should be about all the information you need to get this challenge done as fast and as easy as possible. The fact that you only need 5 depth charge medals for this challenge makes it go incredibly fast. I actually managed to get 6 medals in one match while testing these methods. Just utilize a mixture of the items that register for this challenge, such as the trip mine, the XM-53 launcher, and the gravity spikes. Couple those weapons with maps and game modes that actually have water, such as Hardpoint on Aquarium, or even the new DLC map Verge, and you'll be well on your way to not only finding Nemo, but also causing him severe pain and dismemberment.